and those types of things. The easiest way to automate it is just to copy and paste this to the clipboard. Once you've gotten the command you want, just uh, go up here, snag it onto the clipboard, paste it into a file. Right, and then just use like task manager or something run like task scheduler. If it's something you want to happen every single day, if it's something you just need occasionally, just mm -hmm. run that text file. Okay. So, and that's that's all scripting in PowerShell has to be is get the command right. You can see the results. If you don't like it, you call it back and say, oh no, maybe I only wanted the first five. Keep modifying the command. Once it's what you want, paste it into a script file. Yeah. So it's not you know programming. It's it's much easier than that. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and I'm doing a bunch of stuff. I'll show you a website here. Um, I'm writing a book about PowerShell version 2, only instead of uh, publishing that in print format, I'm going to publish it as I write it, one chapter at a time, on my website at concentratedtech.com. So uh, folks are, are welcome to come up, there's no charge, we don't run advertising on the site, just come up and, and read it for what it is and uh, pick up some good stuff. This is going to be kind of a, a starting from ground zero with PowerShell version 2, the stuff that admins, not developers and everybody else, but the stuff that admins are really going to get the most out of. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, what else is really cool in PowerShell v2 that, that you're excited about? Um, wow, there's so much. Uh, the remoting is obviously a big deal. Um, I think one of the other cool features is uh, the, there's a system called modules. So extending PowerShell used to be limited to uh, pretty much .NET developers. I mean, you had to be writing in C Sharp or, or VB. Now you can write functions and scripts and everything else. So if you're kind of that higher end PowerShell user, it's easy to bundle those together into a module give the whole module to anybody who needs to use it and they can bring that module into the shell with one command and get all the functionality you've created. So it, it kind of creates a good connection for a, a department that's maybe got a really senior guy who knows this stuff and then some guys who are just learning it but it gives them the ability to create their own business processes and their own functionality. Oh, wow. um, the coolest new feature, this is going to sound stupid, but the, the get help commandlet actually has a new parameter called dash online. Oh. So obviously, every time Microsoft wants to fix a, an, a typo in the documentation, the help files, or they want to add an example, they can't just release a hot fix for that, you know? Mm -hmm. So the way they're, they're going to do that is, is the product will come with all the help built in, but if you run get help dash online, it'll go to the TechNet website and get the most recent help that they can update on the web, mm -hmm. and it just pulls it up in your browser. Okay. So uh, that's a totally, totally cool. Very subtle yeah. little thing. Yeah. Really, really useful. Lots of, yeah, very powerful. And, and can that be, command be used for s more granular, or is it an all-up kind of deal, right? Uh, we, like, well, when you run get help, you can tell it, I just need brief help, I need a syntax reminder, uh, okay. I need examples, right. I need the full detailed help, or I want you to go online and show me the whole web page okay. with all the help. I'm just thinking, like, for a specific command, you know, oh, hey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can get a, a particular of, command. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Oh, right on. Yeah, and, so, um, there's uh, a bunch of new programmability changes. Um, I think you're going to see that the companies who are making uh, the, the commercial script editing environments, companies like uh, uh, Sapien and Idera and uh, those folks, they're going to be able to create a much richer script editing experience because of some of the stuff that's going into the shell mm -hmm. underneath the hood. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's really cool. But yeah. honestly, if you're an admin, remoting, remoting sells it and everything else is just cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Everything else is just a bonus, right? It's yeah. just a treat. Okay. All right. And where um, where do you see uh, this uh, really really headed? You know, with with PowerShell as far as um, where you know where you'd like to see. I mean, it's like okay, we've got you know we have we have a system center and all those tools and those yeah. other things, and now we have PowerShell. And where do you see things kind of well, heading? So, so PowerShell's underneath all of it. PowerShell sits underneath most of the system center products now. Mm -hmm. um, it sits underneath Exchange. Uh, PowerShell is part of SQL Server 2008. Uh, uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 is going to start building on. The Windows Common Engineering Criteria says that everything will be PowerShellable eventually. Uh, and so we know it'll happen. We actually have plenty of, of, of precedent for this. We know from the AS400 world, the Unix world, the Cisco world, we know it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Admins who know how to operate their systems from the command line are going to be the top paid people who have guaranteed jobs. And admins who can only operate through a GUI are going to be in the lower end jobs and uh, maybe sometimes have to fight for their jobs a little bit. Uh, you know, you can you can administer a Cisco router through a GUI, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get your CCIE that way. Yeah, You're not going to be the, the top end Cisco person in your shop. Uh, and that's what it's going to come down to. A, a GUI is great if you don't really know what you're doing and you need to kind of poke around and browse a little bit. GUIs are wonderful for that. They really are. And then the name of the product is Windows. Mm -hmm. So you kind of expect that. But at the same time, once you are an expert, why would you spend five minutes poking around, clicking checkboxes and buttons when you can go to a command line, 
bang out a command or, or, or run a script that you've written previously and get the job done more consistently, um, much, much faster, and be able to do repetition. Mm -hmm. So every other aspect of IT has already figured this out. We're just kind of coming to the game a little late, but we're coming in a big way. Okay. Uh, we've got a better shell than the Unix guys have ever had, and they know it. They see PowerShell and they get a little jealous. Okay. <laughs> what is it? What is? What are some of the things that, that when talking with those Unix guys, who they see PowerShell and they're like, "Oh man, uh, you well, guys have so that, right?" Unix is a text-based operating system. Right. Everything in the end looks like a file or a folder. Mm -hmm. So Unix admins t uh, tend to write a lot of scripts. Perl is a favorite language because mm -hmm. it parses text well. Mm -hmm. So it's get me a list of processes and then grab this column and see if the first character starts with an R. So it's all this text manipulation. Mm -hmm. PowerShell runs on Windows. It's an object-oriented operating system. You don't have to do that mess. Get me the processes. Grab the ones where the name starts with R, that, that name property. You don't have to go to the fifth column of a text file. So it's much, much more uh, efficient. It's easier to learn. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit here and play with text files and notepad or whatever all the time. Right. And that sort of drives a, uh, a usability pattern that's just really incredibly powerful. Uh, if you can imagine, here's something that's a little bit difficult to do in the Exchange GUI. Uh, I've put up a new Exchange server, and I want to kind of triage things, and I want to get my biggest mailboxes off the existing server and onto the new one. I want to do this first. A little tough in the GUI, because the GUI was never really built to do that, but it's certainly a common, valid business task. Uh, in PowerShell, get mailbox, type into a command that says where, so filter out, only keep the ones where the size is greater than 100 megabytes, whatever. Mm -hmm. Pipe that to move mailbox, give it the new server and data store name, uh, and that's it, you're done. Yeah. And that's that's powerful. I mean, yeah, that's, that's constructing your own business processes. That's letting admins and their businesses drive the technology, not letting the technology tell us how we need to run our, our environment. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time, Don. Absolutely. Yeah. Glad to be here. Yeah.